Am I on? Good? I'm good. Uh, it's my pleasure and privilege to be here before you this morning to say thank you uh, for your support as a congregation for Global Hope Partners, one of the missions and ministries of Faith Promise here at First Church. If you're not familiar with Global Hope Partners, um, let me tell you a little bit about them. It's a, it is a mission and ministry that works uh, in South Asia. So India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, or the northern border of India near Nepal, Sri Lanka. Uh, their objective is three-part, one, humanitarian, a second, education, and thirdly, community development. On the humanitarian side, they do things like hand out blankets to those who are suffering from the cold during the winter months. Uh, on the education side, in particular, education of children, Global Hope Partners has established Alpha Homes. These are residential education facilities where children who are otherwise not able to attend school, they may be on the street living and looking for food and sustenance, can actually come to the home and receive a quality education. In fact, uh, just a, a quick side note, Diane and I were privileged enough a couple of years ago to be there and meet with one of those children, Ajay, uh, who is a, um, a graduate of Alpha Home, went on to university today. He is a nurse, and we just learned that last June, Ajay got married, so we're real thrilled for him. And then finally, in the community development area in particular, um, Global Hope Partners is focused on the economic empowerment of women because they've discovered that when women take a greater role in the family and have economic power, good things happen in society. And so there are training classes available for them uh, around areas like sewing, um, beauty and cosmetology, things like that that enable them to raise the standard of living not only for themselves, but their families as well. So up here you see a few of the photos from the children and the women and the families that have been recipients of the work and beneficiaries of the work uh, done by the good team at GHP. Um, these are the nice pictures. These are the pictures we show church folk. What you don't see here though, is what led to the nice pictures you see here. You don't see the children and families in bonded labor, which is a term that is exactly what it sounds like. Families and children as young as eight, bonded by contract to a landed owner and working in fields or other business endeavors not able to have an education, not able to break the cycle of poverty. What you don't see here are pictures of women so desperate to take care of their families that they consider everything up to and including suicide as a way out of a desperate situation. What you don't see here are uh, the women forced to uh, produce what is commonly known in India as country liquor to provide some sort of income for their family and that, and thereby perpetuating the scourge of alcoholism that is rampant, especially among men in India. And what you don't see here are some of the stories of the people who have come to Christ because of the work of GHP. Uh, one such story, if you go onto their website, you'll read about a woman named Amina who escaped uh, Afghanistan after the Taliban murdered her family because of their faith, their Christian faith. She tells the story of being led by two angels through the border passing to find the people waiting on the other side from Global Hope Partners with blankets, food, and most of all, love. And there are thousands of stories just like that. Diane and I were privileged a couple of years ago to hear those stories from people who had come to know Jesus Christ because of the work done by the community from Global Hope Partners. Almost invariably, that those stories included something miraculous. The, the one I remember the most was the young man telling us about how his mother promised that if he lived 
during childbirth. If he lived, she would commit his life to Jesus Christ, which she did despite the fact that he had an idea to become an, a, um, an engineer. But he became a pastor instead. We heard other stories of miraculous healing. All of these things amazed and humbled us to a great extent. And it became clear to me that these people possessed something, both the people from GHP and the people they were serving possessed something in their faith that, to be honest, I could not claim. Because they understood that they had Jesus as all they needed because Jesus was all they had. And so we listen to these stories humbled and amazed at the good work being done by Global Hope Partners. So I want to thank you for the support that this church gives to GHP. I also want to invite you to take a look at their website, and you'll see on that, it's globalhopepartners.org, by the way, you'll see on that website that there are a couple of things you can do. First of all, you can continue to pray for the team at Global Hope Partners as well as for the people of South Asia. You can also uh, go in and become a donor to support them on a monthly or annual basis as they continue to do this work, something that's been going on, by the way, for more than three decades. And if you really want to see this in action, if you really want to see the real thing, and my friends, this is the real thing, you can do like we did. You can go. And if you're interested in going and seeing what's happening on the ground in South Asia, please find, uh, find a Diane or myself after worship. We will be glad to tell you about how we can help make that happen. In the meantime, though, thank you for everything that you are doing the dollars, the prayers, the commitment go a long, long ways in bringing the word of God and a, and a desperately needed hope to a people who are hungry for this uh, and who absolutely are appreciative of everything that is done on this side of the pond to help them in South Asia. So thank you.